spent six hours watching TV Antiques and Jeremy till four in the afternoon When my mother came in, said it's wearing pretty thin Son, you better get a fucking job soon When I went on to the internet to see what jobs I could get Just to keep my mother satisfied but with my degree in aviation, for every single occupation, I felt somewhat qualified. Then I saw in the corner of the screen, someone sent a message to me. And they put certain characters in bold. I cried tears as I read every single word they said. All of my problems were solved. Yeah. I said, don't worry, mother, because I got this email from the prince of some country somewhere. <laughs> Said his plan could never fail. I give him all my bank details and make me a million. Next morning, I was so excited, I pissed myself to try to hide it. I had pound signs gleaming in my eyes. To buy myself a suit of gold, but they only had silver in my side. I thought, what should I do with all this money? Oh Lord, would it be funny if I bought myself a brand new limousine? So I went down to the limousine shop in Cleveland. <laughs> and I asked the salesman, what you got? And he just stood there staring back at me. He said, I'm sorry, sir, we're closing down. No can afford limousines in this town and broke and bankrupt and have to sell my kids. I said, you don't sound like you're from Cleveland, you sound like you're from fucking Wales tonight. <laughs> and then I said, don't sell your children. I think I can sell you. Come on, fucking look at this. I said, don't worry, Mr. Salesman, because I got this email from the prince of some country somewhere. Six man, you never fail. I give him both my bank details and it'll make us both real, yeah, yeah. Well, me and the limousine salesman are whistling Dixie at this point. He was telling me about his upbringing in, uh, in Cardiff in Wales and he went to Cleveland about five years ago to start the, the limousine shop. And then starting the hour of the blue, we saw ourselves a hippie or two and they were protesting about the war. Number 10, so we got a flight. We had to fly uh, from Cleveland, obviously. Welcome up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we followed them down to number 10. Trafalgar Square, then back again, not back here, back to number 10. And then we started banging on the door. We said, Come on, Teresa, speak to us. We're tired and we're pissed off. And some of us are moving to France if we're allowed to. And finally, she showed her face. And after her, in second place was Boris Johnson and his Game Boy Advance. I said, how are you doing, Boris? What level are you on? He said, B level <laughs> I said, what game are you playing there, Boris? He said, virtual being a spineless fucking waste of human space. I said, you don't need to bring a virtual version of that, Boris, because that's exactly what you are. And then in front of the crowd, they came to shout, and everybody turned to me. And in the middle of the humdrum was Theresa May's mum. Standing there shaking her look. She said, Teresa, what are you doing? The country's in meltdown. The people are rioting. The high streets are empty. And bricks in so load of shit. And Teresa made and her mother across the crowd to accumulate outside the house at number 10. And she said, Email from the Prince of South Africa. Said his man, you never fail. I'll give you all our bad details. And I'll 